Hey there, welcome back. Okay, so I am processing a lot of the pumpkins that we have on the porch for Thanksgiving or harvest time, fall decorations. And now it's time to get that stuff off of the porch because it's Christmas time, it's time to decorate for Christmas. And I just haven't done it yet and I needed to do it. But before, I just take all those pumpkins and just give them to the chickens or put them in the compost like I talked about in the video that I did a few, a few videos back. Um, I am taking all of the seeds out and I am uh, making sure that I get them labeled correctly. And here is what I've got going on here. Okay. So these are Turks Turban. I wanna make sure that I label these whenever I save them. So I, I took them out of the squash and I've got that squash cooking in the oven right now. So yes, a lot of people will show cooking your squash or your pumpkin whole in the oven and then you cut it up and then you do whatever you're gonna do with it. I'm gonna make some um, squash soup out of it or pumpkin soup out of it. So, um, but I wanted the seeds first. So I have gotten my seeds and I am letting those dry. That's another story. And then I had a lot of ornamental squash that I had on the front porch that I uh, cut those apart and I let them dry. And here's what's going so on. So I have all of this uh, material to put in the compost. Now in the other video I showed where I'm not throwing my pumpkins in the compost pile because I gave them to the chickens. But this, a lot of this was really hard and there's just not a lot of meat in it. So this is going to go into the compost pile. I need pile. to work my compost pile. It's full, so that's what I'm doing today. Now, I did already go ahead and go get the tractor, and basically, I'm gonna move this finished compost into the bucket, take it over to where the greenhouse is, where I'm actually going to use it, and then, I, only until then, I can rework all of this other compost. So I thought I would just show you how I do that, okay? my own compost uh, whenever I'm doing my seed starting but I was afraid of this that uh, I wouldn't be able to fit it all in that bucket but here's a, a corn on the cob or a cob from the corn we probably um, used it in the kitchen or fed it to the chickens or something but uh, all the corn's gone but the cob's not so I certainly could break that up and then put it in one of these other piles that I'm about to turn I'm gonna put it in this one right here this one's going to be um, in the state of being composted a lot longer, so it'll give that a chance to break down a little bit. But more. I always leave a little bit so I can use it kind of as an inoculant or a starter for one of these other piles. It just kind of gets the party going with all the little microbes and everything. But I really like to take it from down below. Like all of the best microbes and all of the best soil is going to be right below where a compost pile was. So I usually like to take it from the bottom anyway. I'm gonna to try to fit a little bit more and then I'm gonna take this all over to the greenhouse. Now, I do realize I'm very lucky to have a tractor to move everything um, all at one time, but there's no way to get this inside the greenhouse so I'm using a trug to move it in with uh, yeah I'm putting everything in this right here so in this gigantic wheelbarrow and I don't think it's all gonna fit so I'm gonna have to figure out what else I'm gonna put in it I would have put my activity tracker on because I've measured, I don't know, 750 calories before turning the compost. So uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's just, um, I think it's some fencing wire that we originally used 
and I'm going to put that someplace where I don't lose it. I'm going to hang it on the fence right there. And I have three of those, so I'm going to take all three of those off, and then I'm going to take this fencing off. Now, I do want to say right here that I have tried the three-bin system. When I completed the Master Gardeners program, they had this really neat-looking, tidy-looking um, thing made out of pallets, and it had a cover on it and everything, but it was really hard to work with to get the, the fork in there and work the pile. So I like this system because I don't have anything in my way. There's nothing impeding my, my fork or my turning or anything like that. So I really prefer this system, that's me. Um, but the most important thing is, in my opinion is, it needs to be touching the ground so that all those microorganisms can come in and go out. I don't like those, like a Rubbermaid type bin system where you turn it, and, but it's not touching the ground. I just, um, I don't like those systems. So this is the one I, I personally prefer. I'm gonna put, turn pile number two into pile number three, okay? One thing that I do wanna tell you right here is what I'm attempting to do is make the whole pile homogenous. So when this cage is on, then the outside of the pile gets really dried out and the inside of the pile is more moist and I just want everything to be um, mixed together. So everything that's on the outside of the pile, I'm gonna to try to get it mixed in with the inside of the pile. And that's what I'm doing here. So I take a scoop out of the middle, put it in the, the new pile. I'm taking a scoop out of the side with a garden fork. I'm not using a shovel anymore. My other one from my video that I did a long time ago, it bit the dust and I was so sad because it was a beautiful fork, but any kind of fork like this, it's got really hard times. Um, when I first started making compost, I tried a pitchfork, it does not work. So I'm taking a scoop from the outside, a scoop from the inside, and then I'm gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. Well, that's a good workout. Okay, so I stopped the video because I wanted to show that um, it really is to the point where it's not quite wet enough. Now, when I first started making compost, they said, don't get it too wet. So I didn't put enough water. So, but I know now that uh, it's, not, it's not quite wet enough. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. There's a big earthworm in there. <laughs> That's good. One more thing that I wanted to say about this is nothing new was added to this pile. All I did was turn it. I didn't add anything to it. Anything that would have been added to it were the leaves that are falling from the trees or some twigs that fall from the trees, which I'm not about to try to control that. So that's, I'm gonna go through it again. This is bin number one, bin number two, and then there's no bin there. It'll just break down and then it'll be like what it was, um, what I've already taken to the greenhouse earlier in the video. So what I'm about to do is take bin number one and turn it into that spot right there. But the big difference is um, I'm going to put this cage back together and I'll be turning everything first, get it mixed up real good, and then I'm gonna put it in this bin. Again, I want bin number one to be completely homogenous. I want it all to be mixed together. There's some shredded paper in there. There's some kitchen scraps. It's really mostly a lot of leaves because we had a lot of leaves at the time. And, um, you know, it, it's gonna be a lot of leaf mold with uh, some chicken poop and some kitchen scraps in it, but mostly it's gonna be mostly leaves. So I'm gonna put this bin back together. I'm gonna tie it back together with the little wire ties. And then I did leave a little bit of the um, 
partially composted material in the bottom and that's going to just kind of help jump start the process. I'm going to mix it in so that's, that becomes homogenous, that becomes part of the pile as a whole, okay? That's what I'm about to do. Okay, so a few things are going to happen here that I didn't talk about. I'm, I put this together here because I wanted to make sure there was enough room in there, and there is. So I'm going to set it aside, and I'm going to kind of toss this pile right here. Now, the other thing that I didn't mention, uh, the only thing new added to it is I will be adding water as needed, but I am also going to do something really important. I'm going to pull my compost thermometer out of there don't want anything to happen to that. I did talk about that compost thermometer on the other uh, composting video that I did years ago when I was brand new to YouTubing and uh, yeah so I've got to undo the wire ties on this and that's what I'll be doing next. I think there's a lot of people that have questions about eggshells in the compost like do you clean them do you cook them in the oven do you put them in the grinder what do you do i just crack the eggs and i put them in my compost pile if it gets up to 131 degrees that's what i need to uh, deal with any kind of um, disease or anything like that which we have our own chickens it's not like we're using chickens from a commercial grower so um so this is what i do <laughs> super easy let me see if we can find one I just saw one. Oh, okay. So it drops on the ground and I just step. That's how I deal with eggshells. Okay. I'm going to put this down on top of that because uh, I'm not going to be, I just, I mean, it just now occurred to me, I don't ever mix the whole pile and then put it in there because um, it just hurts me to put it into um, over the top, all of it over the top. And I take breaks in between when I'm doing my compost because it's just too much <laughs> to do it all at one time. Like I said, I, I did it all at one time. I had my activity tracker on. It was 750 calories, y'all, which is great. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? So. Um, I'm gonna go take a little bit of a break. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep working this. So if it's, some of it's worked, by the time I come back and finish up this video, then you'll know why, okay? All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I got this pile all stacked up. It was a lot. <laughs> so now I'm ready to put my new kitchen scraps and my new leaves into here. And I think I'm gonna do this on a different video because I think this one's running kind of long. But this was what I was talking about, how I do it a little bit differently than the way Dr. Elaine Ingham teaches to do it because I just don't have the space to keep a bunch of kitchen scraps in buckets. And that's the way she teaches it. I do it more kind of a hybrid system, um, the way that I learned it in the Master Gardeners and the way that she teaches it. So um, I'm gonna do that. On the next video so anyway all right that's gonna do it for this one don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and there's a little share button down here if you want if you know someone who's into it and give it a thumbs up if you liked it all right until next time bye for now i need to go get some tea y'all <laughs>